The Pelican season is around the corner, but there are still a few roster decisions they need to make. So we have rumors they may sign Will Barton, but does someone else out there make more sense for the Pels? And what do they do with the open two-way spots that they have? Plus, is there anyone expendable on the roster? Or is this just kind of going to be what it is? It's a Friday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Friday, no live show Thursday, needed a bit of a break, but this is the final show where we are three days a week. We are back to five days a week on Monday, so I'm excited as we gear up for the start of media day preseason, then the regular season for the Pelicans. It's going to be here before you know it, so we're going to ramp up all of the coverage. So, of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are the number one Pelicans podcast. Coming to y'all like no one else is, looking at the roster, looking at the salary cap, looking at this upcoming season, breaking everything down in a way that makes it easy for your morning commute. And if you want to support the channel, make sure you become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday and keep up with what's going on with the team. And now for your second listen, Monday night football for the Saints. Ross Jackson's going to be breaking down everything black and gold over at the Locked On Saints podcast. And today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel, official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet, get, can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So let's get into it because, look, Media Day is about to be here. We're going to be speaking to everybody. They're going to start training camp. They're going to go right into preseason. You kind of need your roster set, right? You don't really see very many moves start to happen now. But the Pelicans have some rumors out there about a player or two they might be trying to sign. And we heard this from Hoops Hype Michael Scotto uh, reporting that the Pelicans are going to work out Will Barton. Noted Pelicans killer, by the way, Will Barton. Basically, anytime that dude has played in New Orleans, it feels like he lights them up. Maybe that's the reason that they're looking to sign him to work him out. More than anything, this is not a big move, and it's more just injury cover, I think, for the Trey Murphy injury and just bringing in a little bit more depth someone that they feel they could rely upon who's also got some shooting in him will barton for his career has shot 35 36 percent from three on almost four attempts per game in his eight-year run in denver where the majority of his career was he did take 4.6 threes per game shooting it at 36.2 percent Not an amazing number, not a bad number either, but a guy that can just go and get you a bucket when you really kind of just need one. He's averaged for his career 11.2 points per game on 9.7 shot attempts. He's a decent enough shooter. He's a veteran that you just feel you can trust. Decent size at the wing at six foot six with a little bit longer wingspan. Not like ancient in age at 32 years old. He'll be 33 years this season. And just a dude that you can get on the end of the bench that, okay, we are down some guys due to injuries or foul trouble. We can kind of trust him. Let's put him in there. I don't think this is a particularly inspiring move. I don't know if this is even the right move, but I get the logic behind like working him out and seeing what he's got left. And the question is, what does he have left? Last season, he moved around a bit, first signing with the Wizards and then go to the Toronto Raptors, didn't play as much as he normally did in terms of minutes per game, particularly with Toronto, and finished the season with, you know, some of the worst numbers of his career, just 6.8 points per game. Still shot the three ball decently well, 37%, and that's kind of what the Pelicans would look to bring him in for. Grab a couple boards, maybe give out an assist or two. Nothing too flashy, too exciting. This is not a guy that's kind of coming in as a savior that is going to really fix anything that the Pelicans need. It's just some shooting depth, if anything. Does he have anything left? Like, yeah, he can hit some threes for this team, certainly. But let me ask you this question. 
Would you prefer Will Barton getting minutes over other guys on the roster? You know, if we're looking at an end of bench guy, a guy that maybe will play five to 10 minutes per game, maybe a little bit more than that, depending, would it be better to give those minutes to a guy like Jordan Hawkins? Would it be better to give those minutes to Najee Marshall if he's not fully in the rotation? I think it would be. And if you were to bring and put Will Barton on this team, is Willie going to play him over the young guys, the rookie particularly, in Hawk, in Hawkins? It feels like the answer to that is yes. Because we've seen Willie Green rely too many times on a lot of these guys. Garrett Temple's an example. Um, Sneed was an example. Um, and all of those, sorry, not Sneed, Tony Snell. All of those guys have gotten minutes over like, other players that probably should have been playing, like Kyra and some of the other guys on the roster at times. So I don't know if I love the idea of bringing Will Barton in if it means that other guys are just going to kind of get buried. And this is, you know, when we, and we'll talk more about Willie Green as a head coach at some point before we get into the start of the year because there's growth he needs to do too. One of them is, look, you got to develop young guys too and you've got to play them. So it's, one of those situations where this makes sense because of the injury, but is this going to actually hold things back in the longer term? I'm curious what you think. Do you want a guy like Will Barton playing over Jordan Hawkins? I don't really. If you sign him and he's more just kind of like break glass in case of emergency guy, okay. If you sign Will Barton and it puts you even more into the luxury tax, and that's not even getting into would they try and duck it first before they then sign Will Barton, I don't love that idea either if you're like trying to get under the tax just to sign Will Barton to kind of put you back over it or right at it. Just stick with the roster you have rather than say dump a guy to clear some space to sign Will Barton, right? If you have to trade a future first in Kyra Lewis Jr. to get under the tax by enough to sign Will Barton, you're basically giving up a first round pick to sign Will Barton and that doesn't sound great to me at this point in his career. You know, are you okay with... It, you know, I'd be okay with it if it's like, okay, he's there, but he's behind basically every other guard, every other wing in the rotation. And that's when he comes in when like all else has failed. But unless it's that, I'm not thrilled about the idea of signing Will Barton. You know, the team has an open roster spot. I don't know if there's like a ton of guys out there that makes sense given the salary camp situation that they're in. Is there another player that makes some sense? And I know there's a name that a lot of you have been screaming for. It's a name that I've talked about on the show a lot, but I don't even think he makes sense anymore. And that's Nerland's Noel. Before we get into the talk about the two-way contracts, let's get into Nerland's Noel looking at him briefly. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5, even if you're existing, you want something? FanDuel's got you covered. We'll get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is super easy to use. You can see all the same game parlays that I love to put a little bit of money on. If one of them hits, you win big. Covers you the rest of the day. And you can bet everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're back to Monday through Friday starting on Monday because we're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, every day. I'm excited to be back with y'all. We'll still do the live shows Thursday. I just needed a break after being on a plane all of Thursday. So figured it would just be easy to record this, pop this out there, and we'll keep answering your questions in the shows, doing the live shows. I'm rolling out the new way to interact with me on Monday. I promise I will have it ready for Monday. I get a little bit of a break this weekend, so we're going to get into all of that. I'm excited. It's a lot better than Twitter, X, whatever it is. You can even text me on this sort of thing and I can respond right to you. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have that ready for you on Monday. So stay tuned for that as we get back to five days per week. And if you want to support the channel, comment down below on YouTube or simply become an everydayer and listen Monday through Friday. So we just went over 
Will Barton. Like, I get it. It makes sense. I don't particularly love the idea for a number of reasons, right? The salary tax, the luxury tax that they're in and dealing with that already. And then I also don't love, you know, him getting minutes over other guys that I think could be a problem. You know, there's another name that's now a free agent that's someone we've talked about in the past that I also don't think makes much sense for the Pelicans, and that is Nerlens Noel, recently waived by the Sacramento Kings, I think it was, who signed him. And this is a guy that, in theory, is like, oh, yeah, he would do a lot of what we need here on the New Orleans Pelicans, but, like, no, not really. And look, he was only waived because they signed JaVale McGee. And if JaVale McGee is better than you and McGee was terrible, or not good, for the Dallas Mavericks last year, I don't know if that's saying a whole lot about you as a player. But he has a reputation as a defensive rim-protecting shot blocker, right? That's Nerlens Noel. That's what he does along with some rebounding. But y'all, I just don't think he's that kind of player anymore. Last season, he only played 17 games. The year before that, just 25. There's been a lot of injuries there. And so I don't know if you want to bring another injury-prone player to this Pelicans team. That kind of scares me a little bit. And when you look at the rim protection, you know, part of it's part of it, a lot of it is due to the injuries, but he doesn't have kind of the same block potential, block rate that he did in his prime when he was with OKC, when he was with the Knicks, when he was with Dallas for a little bit too. Those numbers have dropped. And that is something that does concern me that he's not blocking shots at a high level. This team doesn't need a guy that's just one dimensional. You're never going to put Nerlens Noel out there if it's simply like go out and block shots. You also need your center to rebound. You need him to be an offensive threat somewhat in some way too. And that is something that Nerlens Noel is not and won't be. Last year, he averaged 2.1 points per game in 11 and a half minutes. That's, that ain't it. The year before that with the Knicks in 22 and a half minutes per game, 3.4 points. Year before that, 24 minutes, 5.1. That number's got to be higher. He just doesn't have the offensive game. So yeah, he blocks some shots for you, but if he can't rebound and he's not an elite rebounder, what's the point of that? You know, we're going to get more into the Pelicans' defense. Probably, maybe on Monday I can dive into some of that because I think it'll make sense here with everything. You know, to look at that and why I don't think they need as much rim protection. And to sum it up simply, and I can give you the numbers behind it, they just don't let people get to the rim. That's rim protection. If you don't let them get to the rim. So I don't know if they really need to go and sign Nerlens Noel, given that he's one dimensional and not even good at that one dimensional thing. His rebounding has been bad, borderline bad the past couple of years. I just don't think that it really makes any sense for the Pelicans to go get a one-dimensional guy like that, just on the defensive side at least. You can bring me shooters, certainly. That's why I think Will Barton makes some sense. But could they get help maybe in rim protection in other places? So let's look at the two-way contracts right now for the New Orleans Pelicans. They signed EJ Liddell to an actual deal, so he's not on a two-way, and now you get three, three two-way contracts. Darion Sebron is on one. He was on one last year. It was a two-year, two-way. They signed him, so he's still there. You know, he excelled in summer league. I think they'll give him chances at times during the preseason in training camp. 17.2 points per game, six, uh, 6.6 rebounds per and three assists per in summer league. He looked good there, right? He was the leading scorer for the Pelicans, second leading rebounder, second leader in assists. I liked what he gave you there. He's got good size. He plays downhill, gives you a dimension at the guard position that you don't really have in anyone else at this point in time. I think he'll have an opportunity to maybe get some minutes, and clearly the team is high on him. But what about those other two-way deals? And I think you can look at the summer league roster for one of those guys, and that's Landers Nolly II. You know, senior out of Cincinnati, Memphis before that. You know, in five games for the Pelicans in Summer League, he averaged eight points per game, but he started to get more run as Summer League went on. And the impressive thing from him was the three-point shooting. 50% on four attempts per game, so he's making two per game. Gives you some rebounding, gives you some decent size, you know, out there. And I think that, you know, on the wing, he's six foot seven. You know, he's an experienced guy having played five years in college, two with Virginia Tech, two with Memphis, one with Cincinnati, redshirt year, his freshman year with Virginia Tech. So 
he's a guy that I think the Pelicans liked enough, worked really hard from everything I heard in summer league in practice. You know, he's going to, he signed an exhibit 10 with the team so he can go to Birmingham, be with the G League even after training camp there. But I think they're going to give a long, hard look at giving him a two way contract to see if maybe he's a guy that makes a bunch of sense for New Orleans there. More depth on the wing, too, with the injury to Trey Murphy. If you hit an emergency situation, you can call him up to the parent club, the Pelicans, put him on the bench there and throw him in, kind of break glass in case of emergency type of situation. That's not a bad option to have. He's not going to get a ton of minutes. You're not expecting anything out of him either. But there's a reasonable, I don't want to say facsimile here, but oh, like similar skill set maybe is the right word, to what you get from... Trey Murphy there, wing, that gives you good size and three-point shooting. You know, rather than signing Will Barton, would it be better to give this guy some minutes? I think you could make the claim for that. You know, the other two-way becomes a little bit harder to maybe try and parse out and figure out what they look to do. You know, there was Isaiah Brockington, a guy that they were really looking at last year before he suffered an injury in his uh, pre-draft workout with the Pelicans. They signed him kind of to a symbolic two-way deal for a little bit, played three games for the Pelicans in summer league, didn't look particularly good, unfortunately. 5.3 points per game on four shots. Shot 40% from three, but on limited attempts, just 1.7 per. You know, did shoot his free throws well, gave you a little bit of rebounding. Assist numbers weren't particularly wonderful. You know, maybe they just kind of believe in him and want to give him a chance and bring him in. It was a guy that they were really high on, a guard position out there in the backcourt. So it wouldn't surprise me. You know, he played very well his senior year at Iowa State. So I think if they really feel he has something there, sure, sign him to a two-way deal. You know, he's 24. That's a little bit older for everything. So I don't know if that's the move you want to do, but he's been around the organization. Clearly, they like him a little bit. But I think the name that you were really looking at didn't even play in Summer League. And that is Liam Robbins, who was undrafted here. He was also a five year player in college. So again, he's 24. He's older. But this is an intriguing guy for a number of reasons. And if you want rim protection instead of Nerland's Noel, could it be Liam Robbins? His senior year at Vanderbilt, he averaged over three blocks per game, 3.15. Those are incredible numbers. And he was the SEC defensive player of the year. Also making the SEC all defensive team and first team all SEC. He was good. Like straight up, dude was good and menace. Seven feet has very good size. You know, is this a guy that they maybe want to try and develop into that shot blocker, that maybe future center? He's 24. I don't know how much you're going to get out of him. But this is a guy who has an injury, you know, didn't play in summer league, but is going to be ready from what we hear in training camp. I think they're going to give him every opportunity to try and earn that two-way deal or at least stay with the franchise, maybe on an Exhibit 10 and put him in Birmingham. But if you really want him, you could absolutely sign him to a two-way deal. There's very little risk in that, given that you get three of them now. And I think that's a guy that you know, fans really want to see what he's capable of doing. And the Pelicans have had success with these type of four or five year seniors that are all defensive guys. Herb Jones, second round, former SEC defensive player of the year. Maybe there's a trend. You also had Jose Alvarado as the ACC defensive player of the year as a senior, undrafted. So the Pelicans have had a lot of success with these two-way contracts. So it wouldn't surprise me if they really take their time to make sure they're getting the right other two guys here because they feel maybe they can develop one of them and it turns into a player on the roster. And for a team in a small market, that's huge. So we'll see. Is there anyone you want it to be? Do you want it to be Brockington? Do you want it to be Nolly? Do you want it to be Liam Robbins? Do you want to wait and see? Or is there someone else out there you think the Pelicans should try and go get and put on a two-way deal for next season? What do you think about Darion Sebron, too? Does he have a chance with the Pelicans this coming year? So coming up next, though, let's look at the overall roster. And we'll kind of wrap up the show for the week before we hit five days a week next week. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's talk about... Is this it? Is this kind of it? We're talking about moves really around the edges here. Is there a bigger move coming? Hold on. We'll talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should feel empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. 
You know, we have hurricanes down here. Do you have a hurricane kit? Do you have medicine and things in that there? And can you get the medications you need if something happens while you're evacuating? It's not always the easiest thing. Can you get in touch with your doctors? Because they're likely evacuating as well. And that's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medications in hand, and Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. If you're out of town and you're evacuating, so is your doctor. So you get to save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using promo code locked on at checkout. JaceMedical.com, that's Jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com, promo code locked on. Put it in your hurricane kit. I ordered one of them. This sounds great, so I'm going to be prepared whenever anything comes up. You can never be too certain with that sort of thing. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team, the number one Pelicans podcast, and we're back to five days a week as we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Become an everydayer. Let me know if you're an everydayer in the comments down below on YouTube, and let me know what you want to hear talked about on Locked On Pelicans we're ramping it back up. It means we're turning your questions into shows. Put them there in the comments down below and support the channel that way. Now, for your second listen, go check out Locked On Saints. Ross Jackson breaking down everything black and gold. Ross is the best. And of course, we'll have the new way to interact with me on Monday. Rolling it out. You can text. It's super easy. You'll get updates from me and everything too. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be perfect with Media Day right around the corner. So let's look at the rest of this roster because everything we've talked about here is... Look, frankly, they're just like unsexy moves, right? Like none of these things that we've just said are difference makers. Like Will Barton, Nerlens Noel aren't making a huge difference. There might be a little bit of a difference, but it's not like a huge difference with this Pelicans team at all. These aren't going to be the guys that mean you, you get into the playoffs or not. You know, if they're playing significant minutes, something has gone horrifically wrong here and they're probably missing the playoffs anyway. And I will eat these words if, you know, somehow Will Barton signed or Nerlens Noel or even anyone makes a massive difference and they get into the playoffs because of one of those guys. That's not unheard of, but you get what I'm saying. Two-way deals sound great. They're exciting because it's kind of like the promise of the unknown, the hope, what could be. Anything could be in that box, right? Even a boat. But it usually isn't a boat. And these guys just kind of get like torn through. We've seen the Pelicans go through a number of guys on two-way deals. And why they've had while they've had more success you know, than other teams, I think, it's rare that those guys are like the difference, difference makers in things. Jose Alvarado was great. Got the jersey that one day I'll put up behind me. But, you know, they were going to get into the postseason kind of with or without him, I think. He could be a contributor in it, but he wasn't going to make or break it. It was going to be Brandon Ingram, really, that year. And then the CJ trade. So when you look at this roster, I think this is kind of going to be what it is. For better or worse. Now with the Trey Murphy injury. And that's kind of a big blow to the team. As it looks like we might not see him till the middle of December or so. And he might be missing 10 to 20 games. But overall I do think this is going to kind of just be the, the team that we see. You know if everyone stays healthy other than Trey. They're probably still going to be okay. You know your backcourt is really going to be set with CJ McCollum. Herb Jones and kind of B.I. in there a little bit too. Jose Alvarado is going to come back and be healthy for the team. We hope that Dyson Daniels takes a step up. And then you also have Jordan Hawkins if he gets minutes ready to go. On the wing it's Brandon Ingram. It's Trey Murphy. It's Herb. It's Najee Marshall. In the front court, you have Zion Valanciunas. Larry Nance Jr. You know um Cody Zeller, EJ Liddell. You know, I just at this point don't see a big shakeup coming to the roster. It would be little tweaks. You know, they don't need to get under the luxury tax before the season starts. I haven't mentioned Kyra here because I just don't see where his spot in the rotation is. And maybe he'll have a bigger one. And I think we'll see that early on in preseason if he does. Don't forget in the play-in tournament game, for whatever reason, head coach Willie Green decided to go to him first when he hadn't been doing that at all. 
it was reminiscent of what the Tony Snell minutes in the play-in tournament game against the Clippers where the Pelicans blew the lead before coming back and eventually winning that one and stressing us all out. If you were at the Pels 12 watch party with me at Mid City Yacht Club, I was losing my freaking mind that we're getting Tony Snell minutes, three minutes, five minutes, or whatever it was in a game when Tony Snell hadn't played in a month in the biggest game of the season, win or go home. Oh. So I don't know. Maybe Willie Green decides he wants to trust Cairo Lewis Jr. more, but I wouldn't say those minutes were good or that Cairo's like looking sharp in there and it's probably a bit of a surprise to him. So, you know, he's still on the outside looking in, I think, but the Pelicans don't need to deal him right now. They can do that before the trade deadline. So if they get kind of desperate and need to attach a first round pick, I don't know, wait it out as long as you can and maybe you get a better deal than it before. But you don't have to rush into anything right now. You need to just get under the luxury tax by the end of the season, which fundamentally, functionally for the Pelicans is going to mean the trade deadline because then you can't really get rid of players and stuff as easily after the fact. It's possible you can do it, but it's a little bit difficult and it doesn't happen as often, but you can still make a trade after the season ends too. So... I think you're going to see this group roll in. You know, if they could find a deal for another center, I think they would have. And we know they kicked the tires on guys like Miles Turner, um, Jared Allen, and some others, and they haven't been able to work it out. I think at this point, you don't want to have some uncertainty around you and you want to roll into the season, particularly now that you're down Trey Murphy, with as much continuity as possible and as much certainty around the team as possible. Do you really want to be breaking in a new player, trying to build chemistry with that guy, getting him kind of caught up to speed on what you're doing at this point? Probably not. You do it for the right player, but you don't make a move just to simply make a move. And so that is where I think this roster stands. I think it's just going to be this group of guys and maybe there's a shakeup before the trade deadline. It feels like they're going to need to at least do something, whether that's a move to bring in another center and you ship out Valanciunas. Maybe you don't even do that and you give Valanciunas an extension just to not have to deal with that hanging over your head that he could walk and then you don't get anything in return. That hurts this team because they don't have the money to then replace him. You know, or it's simply dump Kyra Lewis Jr. in the five point something million, the five point seven million that he's making, get under that luxury tax, they're two point nine million dollars into it, and then you kind of deal with everything else. So I do think this is gonna be the roster. Maybe it's a slight tweak. They'll certainly add at least one two way guy, you have to imagine. But I don't think we're gonna see a big shakeup on the roster right now, and probably not then closer to the NBA's trade deadline. Never know. Things are possible. These teams are always talking. But that's kind of, I think, the way to look at it right now. So that means we focus on this group of players and what they're capable of doing going forward and what this team's going to look like at the start of this season. And now that we're back to five days a week, starting on Monday, there you go. Those are the things we're going to be talking about here on the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, this week of Locked On Pelicans. Back to five days a week on Monday. I'm looking forward to being here with y'all Monday through Friday. Become an everyday or support the channel that way. And we'll have a new way to interact with me as well. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with y'all on Monday.